We're just waiting for him to pop on. Oh, you you're waiting for me? Oh, okay. I'll pop on right there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I can't find him. Where is he? I know he's. Maybe here. I need to say do you need to say something, and like the little thing pops up. Then when you start speaking, is that? Oh, there, is you, that go, there you go. Hey, everybody. Hope everyone's doing good on this fine Saturday day. Saturday day. Ah, uh, there's Rudy. Okay, we're all here. Hey, guys. Hey, Rudy. Hey, Justin. How's it going? Going good. How you doing? Dandy. Good old uh, Saturday morning, or I guess noon. So it's, we're, yeah. we're so excited to have you here today, and I, I think all these amazing fans are so excited to be able to see you and to participate in this event. Well, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's uh, here in the first place, and uh, yeah, like it's a pleasure of mine to be here. So, you know, we're holding this event today for the fans. These are incredible fans, mainly of you, hopefully of Tings, who have all um, either bought our exclusive poster or have registered and won the chance to be here. So we really appreciate you guys, and thank you so much for, for coming today. Yeah, I want to thank everybody so much, and thank you guys for being amazing people and being amazing fans. Of hopefully, things as well as uh, good old Outer Banks or, you know, what other project you might know me in, but I don't know. Most probably Outer Banks, but yeah. So, Rudy, I've known you for for over a year now, actually, for a while mm -hmm. now, and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to ask some questions today that I may already know the answers to, but I don't know if, if everyone else does. So, um, bear with me. I feel like we've had some really incredible conversations um virtually on set um so yeah so i want to start just from the beginning you know i think everyone knows or maybe they don't that you're from alaska isn't that right i'm from the ak yeah the great white north um which is incredible and very different from la like for you was that a culture shock coming from alaska to la and is that the first place you moved yes i um I mean, if, yeah, like in terms of moving out of my home, I, I moved in Alaska. Uh, I, um, in terms of moving out of Alaska, I moved in Alaska somewhere else. But to L.A., yeah, it was a little bit of a culture shock. Uh, <laughs> I uh, moved directly out to L.A. after um, high school and uh, a little bit on a, on a whim and a dream, but it seems to work out. But, um, yeah, it was quite... A, of a, like coming to realizations of how big the world really is once you moved out of Ella, Alaska. You know what I find funny is that because I had the same experience when I moved from my small town in Pennsylvania to to New York and then to LA. It's like the world is so big, but then I also feel like we get to a point where we realize how small the world is too <laughs> and how connected we all are. I mean, like look at what we're doing right now. Yeah, I mean, seeing all these people here and like. Yeah, like it is. These are the moments where you start realizing how big it is, and then I think I may say so, Justin. I think I mean, how long have you been in LA? I've been here for ten years, if you could believe it or not. Yeah, I mean, like, so what I'm starting to think is that I think LA can feel like a small world sometimes. I don't know. This is just my opinion, but I think sometimes LA can make you feel like the world actually is small. But when you initially get here, you're like, you're like, what the heck is going on? But um. Uh, I think LA has this little like world of its own that I actually, I mean, we can dive into that later, but like, that's what I've been finding out about LA is that a lot of people are very connected in this industry here. So it's like, if anybody's moving out to LA, just know that like, there's, a, there's a little bit of a networking system here. Um, so yeah, actually, what was that like for you moving here? I mean, what was, were you discovered in Alaska or did you come to LA first and were you discovered here and, and how were you discovered? I was just some Alaskan boy moving to LA. I wasn't discovered in uh, Alaska. I, uh, I actually was, uh, it was a little bit of a weird, like balance between trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do in LA. But I knew for a fact acting was like the main 
had focus. There's other things that I was like, I'm moving to LA. I need to cover all of my bases up there. There's, and like trying to find different avenues of where it's like, if this doesn't work, I go here. If this doesn't work, I go there. And then like, that's what LA felt initially. But um, I think I really wasn't discovered. Like, like it was more like I just like I guess you could say Outer Banks is when I was discovered. But like, uh, I was very focused on I guess career and trying to get that off the ground and I surrounded myself with people that kind of had the same mindset and I think that was the hardest thing about moving to LA is finding that group of people that really just wants to motivate you and you feel motivated around them and then you get to work and like every single day like uh I mean when I moved out to LA I just kind of went into survival mode of what do I need to do which is find acting classes community uh submit myself submit some get a reel together then all of a sudden like reps like it was just very hyper focused and kind of tunnel vision on like what i had to do and tried to figure that out and i had some amazing people point me in directions and like this is not at all trying to say that i was able to do this by myself because there's so many people that uh helped me along the way who who maybe were some of those people was it family was it people you met when you got to the ground here how did you make that leap from sort of alaska small town to where you are today like what would you say was that pivotal or was it or was it a series of yeah things? i mean there's this guy that i'm living with nowadays that i uh his name's kyle allen he's my good buddy here he pointed me in so many different directions he introduced me to his acting studio he introduced me to an improv studio and he he did, he pointed me in these directions in terms of acting. Uh, but then my family helping me with like, <laughs> when I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Like when you just feel like completely lost or, uh, whether it's also like mentors that you have here trying to like really ask you the deep questions of what are you trying to accomplish with your acting and your craft as it is. Cause I think you, it's very important to have a purpose, um, when you're doing even of the film like what is the purpose of your character in the film and knowing that and going as deep as you can having mentors teaching me about that really inspired me to just keep chugging along um uh and like i mean shout out to my parents shout out to kyle shout out to another roommate of mine andres and like all these great people that have really been with me since the very beginning very beginning of me moving from alaska to here um so yeah uh yeah and to all my teachers and mentors as well. Larry Moss. And then what was your first job? Oh, first job out here was dishwashing. That was my first job at the Cheesecake Factory at the Grove, everybody. Uh, I don't know if everybody, the Grove is this, how do you want to describe the Grove, Justin? Uh, I feel like the Grove is the Disneyland of malls. Sure, that's a great, um, we'll go with that, we'll go with that. And uh, yeah, I was working in the dish room. Um, that was my first job. Uh, then they actually, uh, promoted me up to, uh, host. And then from there I was a busser and I was from the busser. I was going to be going to serving, but before I became a server, I was actually, uh, swept off my feet by outer banks. Do you remember what your first screen test was like? Screen, screen test for Outer Banks or for uh, previous stuff? like I guess for anything and, and then for Outer Banks. And, and how has that sort of experience changed for you? Has auditioning become something that you find is easier and easier? Or is it the same experience every time you enter that, that room or put yourself on tape? Oh, it's definitely evolved. Um, you definitely have can't just go into your first screen test without feeling any nerves. Like, that's definitely there. Like, uh feeling the pressure of where it's like if you do this if you get this through like what is what's next and stuff like that feeling all those like you know make it uh take it till you can make it kind of feeling um uh so i'd say what's evolved the most is letting go of uh like when i went into I'd say the Outer Banks uh, auditions, uh, which I went through the ringer for, because they, I mean, I was just some kid from Alaska with like a couple of things on my resume. Uh, they were like very, they knew they liked me, but they didn't know if it was like, can we trust the kid? And I think I let go of the fact that I needed to impress, I needed to book it, 
I really asked myself, why are you going into that room? Uh, what's, what's, what's with the person that you're portraying? Um, and why are you, what are you going to make them feel with that character? What are you going to make that audience feel when you go into that room? Um, it's kind of the questions I was asking myself. And once I surrendered myself to those questions, that's when, uh, that's when I started getting into the groove of like, uh, walking into a room with some like quote unquote high, high end people who or other actors that are in the same waiting room and feeling the pressures over it's like, holy crap, I saw this guy on TV the other day and, uh, he's, uh, going out for this uh, role here and like feeling that, uh, just dealing with those pressures and understanding that that they have gone through the same thing. They understand that like there's a competition to everything, but is that really why we do it? And uh, that's kind of like what I was asking myself. So it's evolved from super needing to book it to then letting it back go. And I think once I did that, that's when Outer Banks came through. When you auditioned for Outer, Outer Banks, was that something that came from a manager or an agent, or did you not have a, a manager or an agent yet? No, yeah, I had the reps at that point, and I came across my desk from a rep. Okay. And what did you think when you first read the script? Was it the real script, or was it sort of fake side? Actually, or... fun fact, I have it upstairs because um, I didn't throw it away. It was the first size. It's just the sides. Um, um, sides meaning, like, a chunk of the script uh, or um, the audition side. Uh, so, uh, they're upstairs actually, but, um, that's all I got really. I didn't really get the scripts until I booked it. What was your first impression of, of the show and the character and JJ? And did you know, is that the role that you, you were going out for? Or did you just do a read and that, and then they asked you to come back for that or? Yeah, I read for three characters, John B, JJ and Rafe, uh, in total, I think it was nine auditions. And I think I read for JJ, actually, the same amount for J. No, that's not true. It was I'm trying to think of the, the ratio here. I think I read for Rafe twice, and they're like, okay, he's he's okay. He's, 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 he's not too shabby. And then, like, they were like, what about JJ? And then they read me for JJ. Um, and then they read me for John B. And they read, read me for John B a couple of times. And then... Uh, then it just ended up being JJ once I got to Charleston and they were like, here's the deal, man. Like, like which character? And I, and then like, it was just kind of a moment of where we were feeling it. And then, um, I have the text of when I actually sent to Jonas, the show creator, uh, JJ. So, um, yeah, that's that story. Uh, so it was, but it was a combination of where I think he just was the best fit. Like, I'm not trying to say that it was like, I chose it and then chased it. Like, like that's, that's not what happened. He chased very much was John B once we got to Charleston. And then we all kind of like found that character and found our little places. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the true story about that. Did you have to do chemistry reads with, um, with the other cast members before you, you found out you got the role or did everyone sort of just like, this is who you are now meet, you're meeting for the first time at the, at the table read. No, we had chemistry reads um, right when we got there with a mix and match of different characters. And then on then the second day of chemistry reads, uh, I played JJ with Chase as John B. And after that, they came outside and were like, we've made our decision. Everybody can go home. And everybody went home. And <laughs> that's a crazy experience of when everyone's like, they've made their decision. Now everybody go, like then you get in your car and drive twenty five minutes. Oh gosh, crazy, crazy. Was that just like all nerves the whole ride home? You had to just, yeah, nerves. Uh, but it's like again, like you just surrender yourself. If you don't get it, you feel yourself for the next thing, and uh, yeah, it's just such a giant weight that you have to be holding. And then once you find yes or no, you can, you know just take the weight off and yeah it's a nerve-wracking experience that's for sure i say yeah that's i think that's definitely where the nerves are now it's whether or not knowing after the audition rather than in the audition does that make sense no absolutely it's like almost when you're you're in the audition everything else falls away and you're just doing your doing your best and then it's after it's like did they like me then it's like, like good 
Yeah, um, talking I feel the same way every time I take a picture. It's like while I'm when I'm taking it, um, there's there's no nervousness. It's after. It's like how are people going to receive it? Yeah, as, yeah, 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 yeah. As yeah, good yeah. as I thought it was when I was shooting it. You're um, trained and calm to do what you do, but you're not trained to <laughs> control other people's perception of it. Like you're not trained for that. Like we can't be. Like you can't be. That's that's how life goes. So when when you were filming season one, did you have any idea or you know or inkling that the show was going to be what it was, which is this massively popular phenomenon? I think we knew we were onto something. I think we felt like when we were getting some nice feedback from other people because we have such an amazing crew uh when they were like like when they're like okay these kids are bringing it and when when a experienced crew crew and everybody else is like saying like no this is it feels good it feels encouraging it feels great i don't think there's any way to know uh, when you're creating something, though, that it's going to be a hit. Like, it, it depends on so many things, and you don't really... I don't think it's, like, good to think about it too much of, like, is this going to be a big hit? And everybody's, like, saying yes. Everyone's saying good. Like, everyone's like, yeah, it is. But I think if you if you go... Just like going into an audition, if you go in feeling like you're going to book it, and then you don't, it's one of those things where it's just, like, <laughs> it stings that much more rather than doing your show, shooting the show, staying focused on creating as best you can. And if it's not a hit, letting it go and then bringing it on the next thing. Like, I think that's where my mindset was. But I do feel like when we were shooting it, everybody was like feeling this energy of it's like, oh, this feels, it's clicking, you know, it feels right. Has your approach to the way you work changed going into season two, knowing how much of a global phenomenon it's become and the fan base and i mean probably just the difference of when you were filming season one there probably weren't a lot of fans that showed up because they're, they're they didn't even know it existed but season two i imagine there must be dozens or hundreds of people that are showing up to set so has has the do you feel that pressure or or not really yeah i think when something yeah, absolutely. I think that's normal to feel like when you are in demand to set a stand. If your bar is here and then you're asked to do it again to meet that bar, meet that bar. Yeah, you got to be trained. You got to be ready. You got to be just like any athlete. You got to be tuned for that next race. Uh, and if you're not, then you're you know like you're risking. You're just risking when you when you compete again or if you perform again. You what you're risking is the your your reputation of how good are you and um you know people like to feel like they are good at something and feel like that uh so like going into season two very much was something where it's just like yeah let's be good again let's do it again i think those nerves might pop up uh, and then you gotta just again just like going into an audition to them out what are you really doing there and what actually works is, and what people what actually works is connecting with people connecting with uh the scripts connecting with what's going on and that's i think that's the answer to everything really it's just connection now correct me if i'm wrong but after season one you actually quarantined with a bunch of your castmates or am i making that up no that's true we, tr uh, we quarantined for about a month and a half and then we were like oh wait we can't <laughs> we need to <laughs> We need to live our own lives now. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to ask. I feel like, you know, you guys play as such a really incredibly close group of friends, almost a family on the show. Do you guys all hang out in real life, or is it like hiatus? Like, I'll see you in three months because no, I mean, every day. I mean, look, look, since season two, I think there's been, uh, I mean, there's just a huge wave of things because if something gets so big as it does, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be honest, not entirely sure how big it is. Like, you can't really comprehend how big something is when everyone's like, bluh, bluh, bluh. but like, you know, you can just take people's word for it. Uh, but like when, a, when I think after season two, it's just kind of like, I mean, Kobe was, you know, after the show dropped, Kobe was dying down, season two I'm talking about. Um, and so it's like, then all of a sudden these people's lives take, when something gets this big, people want to have these avenues now. And like, I wouldn't say that it's completely different than season one. Uh, I think after the show dropped in season one, we were still technically like 
unknown kids and we were uh you know we just had that time i think nowadays it's, it's a little harder especially now that like everything has to be so organized because of covid and it's still here um that you know there's not as much time as there used to be uh because of new opportunities and i think that's okay but like look like we still very much hang out i mean i was hanging out with jd like a week ago and then i talked to chase like two days like like we're very much in touch that is for sure now i know you've been super busy this summer filming Mm -hmm. quite a few projects what can you tell us or not i don't know what you're allowed to tell us or not tell us about what you've been doing this summer so i'm gonna let you you do all the talking (laughs) I mean, shit, yeah, you, you set me up, just asking me. Um, <clears throat> wait, I think you called me when I was on uh, yeah, I, I called you on one set when you were in Europe, so Spain, maybe? Yeah, yeah, okay, I'll say that. I shot a project in Spain. You can say that, because that's, that's probably not it. So, uh, that was fun. Um, that's pretty much all I think I can say. I, I don't think I can say anything much more than that. Uh, I mean... You can hand you say when when w- can we see this project or is that I think the trailer's yeah. dropping I think the trailer's dropping soon I think the trailer's dropping soon I'm not quite sure when but I I don't even know if I'm gonna it's up in there I don't know if I can even say anything like it uh but uh yeah like um we're fingers crossed that it's gonna be received well and there's a there's another project I shot in Chicago that was really fun um uh that is a really fun, it was a really fun indie that I shot with a great group of people, great, uh, hilarious kids. Uh, and that, uh, it's called uh, The Crusades, because that's out in public knowledge. And uh, that should that trailer also should be dropping, I think, uh, come late fall. So, um, without giving anything away, what, what has the experience been like shooting on other sets? And how has that been different than, than the Outer Banks set? Oh, um, shooting on crusade set was very different because movies can sometimes go at a much different pace than a show i think a show can feel like it's like you know when you have multi-cam you really have so many things that you're not catching and i think on a movie set everything seems to be so organized and so planned and then that can sometimes be very helpful and then sometimes it can be very time consuming and kind of draining and then you're like Ugh. but at the same time you can also be very prepped for the, your scene and everything can be like bing bang boom got it next thing so in a way when you're shooting on a movie set your scenes are actually kind of shorter to shoot because everything is so planned prepped got it moving on in outer banks or any tv show i'd say there's more takes given uh, I guess it depends on the sound. I can't, I can't really speak generally, but like, um, on Outer Banks, multi-cam, it's just kind of like, blah, 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 another, blah, 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 and then we just get all these, like, different pieces. Um, so that's what it's like on Outer Banks. It's just rapid fire. Uh, working on, like, uh, I'm really close to saying some stuff. Uh, uh, working on movie sets that are kind of just, budgets are kind of intense and uh feels like um you a lot more pressure um you kind of just have to talk to the director and i feel like that's what i did on my previous project is i just really just sat down with the director and that's what kind of tuned out everything else and then you're just boom into the scene what are you are you most proud of so far in your career or in your life hmm um, what am I most proud of? I'd say that's a really deep question there, Justin. Jeez, can I ask you the same question afterwards? Because I feel like, uh, uh, I would say I am most proud of, uh, really, really cherishing and, uh, appreciating connection. I think that's what I'm like, I'm with as like to the people that I think I trust and finding those people. Cause that can be hard is finding the right people to trust and then really, really diving into that connection and experiencing that. Uh, that's, I think the most important thing is the connection. I think I said that earlier, but like 
that's what I'm most proud of, I think, in my life. It's just when there's those people, you connect and cherish that. Do you journal or have a diary or, or anything like that? And what, what is that sort of creative process like for you? Oh, yeah. You do oh, yeah. Um, I journal, I think, um, uh, it's a, um, there's like different techniques that sometimes you just literally start writing literally the first thing that pops into your brain, say it, write it down. Like keep just going, just keep going and writing those thoughts down. Like sometimes it's the same word over and over and over and over and over again. Um, sometimes I give it more thought and I write some poetry or jot down some notes about how I'm feeling about my current state of mind or something like that, or write a joke down. Like, I mean, I'm not much of a stand up guy, but like there's some stuff in there that's some stand up material because I think it's fun to write and, uh, that's in there. But, uh, yeah, like, um, it's kind of all over the place. And, you know, I don't think I've actually asked you this ever before, but do you have a dream role? Mm. Tom Holland took it. Spider-Man would have been dope, but uh, <laughs> no, he deserved that job. Man. Uh, uh, you know what? I will say this in front of all these people because I think it would be really fun. Uh, just pop, like I've been kind of thinking about it. If they do a Peter Pan, like I feel like I could crush Peter Pan. I could crush Peter Pan. I've also, when I watch Hook, I love Robin Williams. He's one of my biggest idols. And um, just knowing that connection, I'm just, I also love the story of Peter Pan as well. Um, not growing up, kind of hits a deeper spot, if you know what I'm saying. A um, lost boy. A little lost boy. A little lost boy from Alaska. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think Peter Pan, Westerns, period pieces, uh, nights and stuff. Um, that'd be fun. I don't know. I'm just spitballing now. Uh, sci-fi movies, totally fun. I think, uh, horseback riding in a movie, that would be pretty, pretty damn fun. I you have to ask me, but, uh, I don't really think, uh, any other role that I can like name other than Peter Pan right now. No, but I mean, that would be an incredible role. I think this is um, an amazing time to segue into some fan questions that we absolutely uh, aggregated this week from all of you incredible participants. So thank you, everybody. I have a list of, of questions here that we're going to ask today, and I apologize if I pronounce anyone's name wrong, um, but in no particular order. We have a question from Ariana, and Ariana asked, who is your inspiration? Uh, Robin Williams, like I said, he's a big inspiration of mine. Um, uh, many reasons, but, uh, and of course he played Peter Pan. Yes, he did. He played, he paid the pan. Uh, uh, Heath Ledger is a actor I've always looked up to in many different realms and watching his, all of his work. And, um, uh, I mean, if we're talking career, if we're talking about acting, like, Adam Driver, Ron Williams, um, you go back to then, you know, I mean, Marlon, Marlon Brent, like you can like go way back and just when you watch Streetcar Named Desire or you go into plays that he's done. And then uh, there's a lot of theater actors uh, that are in my theater class that I always studied and I looked up to them. But if you're talking about them, like modern, like, like you're talking activists or you're talking about other issues like that, I mean, Whew, I have a lot of idols. Like I have a lot of people that I'm like always looking up to and trying to learn from, as well as just people that in my everyday life, uh, like my mentors, that they just kind of coach me through what I'm feeling. You mentioned Marlon Brando, and I, and I think actually a lot of the inspiration for the shoot that we did together was inspired, I feel like, by old images of Marlon Brando. So if you guys, I'm sure you've all checked it out, but if you haven't checked it out already, you guys should definitely visit Ting's magazine.com and check out our story and our video with Rudy and you can also buy a limited edition poster which I think many of you did but purchase so thank you so much for that um our next question is from Elia and she asked what is your favorite film favorite film oh remember the titans with Denzel Washington um I cannot tell you like all right Watch, watch that movie and ask yourself, can you find a spot of like acting? Can you see it or feel it when someone's acting in that film? 
even the background actors, even the background actors when they're cheering on the uh, uh, Titans on the field, like I buy everything. There's nothing in that film that's also a beautiful film. Um, uh, thoroughly, just inside and out. Remember the Titans. So this next question we had from uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of people, but but two of them were named Neve and Sophie. Neve and Sophie, if you guys are here, um, they asked, what was your favorite scene to film during Outer Banks season two? Okay, there's so many. Okay, I think just because I could really just sit down and then it's just two people talking. There's not, there's nothing about it. Just two people talking, hashing it out. I love the scene and bringing it to life. It was the jail uh, scene with Chase or John B. Um, we sat down at the uh, this nice little tin table and we just kind of like took a breath and took everything in. And I think that's when I was just like, oh, you got. I gave, it gives me chills. It's just thinking about it because uh, it just was like, just feels so real. It's great. Our next question is from Eliza, and actually she asked, I think, my favorite question of the day, um, and it's a deep one, actually, and I almost wish that I asked it myself. She asked, where do you get your courage from? Oh. Um, where do you get your courage from? Where do I get my courage from? I'm going to say you get it with the people you get it from doing what's right with the people around you, um, doing the right things with the people you surround yourself with. Uh, I think that's where you get your courage from. And then that helps. That helps uh, knowing that you're doing something right. And uh, so I think that's doing right by those you're surrounded by. That's how you get your courage. And our next question is from Claudia. And she asked, uh, if you weren't an actor, what would you like to be doing? Well, I was going to be going to culinary school. I had my chef hat upstairs. Um, I wouldn't say I necessarily would have wanted that. I mean, I think I would have enjoyed it. For sure, I can pretty much enjoy it. I was enjoying the dish room at Cheesecake Factory. Uh, but there's other things you can enjoy than that. Uh, uh, I think... Okay. I'm going to say if I wasn't an actor, I probably would be some sort of teacher um, back home in Alaska. I didn't know you were you were an avid an avid chef. Do you cook a lot? I try to. I, uh, I have these darshkan. Uh, that's not even a word. Uh, Darngan good uh, rice bowls that I make. Um, those are pretty good. I make also mean coffee cake uh, in the morning. Um, well, I can bake a little bit. Yeah, I gotta make you some coffee cake, man. That's what I gotta do. V- vegan coffee cake for me, but <laughs> I haven't done that so, yet. But I can try. I'm I'm curious, what would your go-to sort of date night dish be to make? Ooh. So I'm an Alaskan boy. So a nice seared salmon. I don't know if we got any seafood lovers in here, but uh, a seared salmon uh, with then. A little bit of garlic bread, Ooh. and a glass of white or red wine. That's a good time. Um, our next question is from Grace, and she'd like to know what your chipotle order is. Chipotle <laughs> order: white rice, black beans, carnitas, uh, uh, hot salsa. Come on now, hot salsa, uh, sour cream, lettuce, and cheese. Yes, that sounds good. I'm hungry. Double rash. Double rep. Um, and from Cassidy, Cassidy, if you're here, she'd like to know what is your favorite Netflix binge? A lot of documentaries, but um, favorite Netflix binge. Do you get a free subscription? No. Netflix doesn't hook us up. <laughs> Netflix doesn't hook us up, guys. A shout out. I got to call them out. Um, okay. Favorite thing to binge? I mean, shoot, like, wait, does it have to be on Netflix? Yeah, it should be on Netflix. I'll probably get shot in the head if I don't say it. Um, uh, I'm going to say uh, I really watched Castlevania. I binged, I binged Castlevania. Or Love, Death, and Robots. Love, Death, and Robots, I binged. 
crazily. I need to check these shows out. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of either. Dude, you would love Love, Death, and Robots. Like, it's just fun short stories that are very intense and very beautifully animated. You would love it. People fall in love with robots? Love, Death, and Robots. No, there's stories about either love, death, or robots. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh, what is your favorite line from OBX? That was another question from Cassie. I actually, I like this one, so I, I'm giving her two. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say Drew's phrase. Uh, I'm a proactive person. When I, roll, when I <laughs> when he said that, I think uh, I just lost. I was like, you know what, Drew? You are a proactive person. You really are. So when he said it, I just kind of chuckled a little bit, so I think it's my favorite line. Um, our next question is from Lauren. Lauren, thank you so much for being here. Um, she asked, where do you see JJ in future seasons of the show? And and where would you want your character to go? Um, I really want JJ to... Uh, really want to lose it. I want him to lose a lot. Like, I want him to, like, lose and then come back from it. Uh, because I think that's, that's the direction it's heading. Like, I think he's going to really lose a lot and then he's going to find his own again. I think that's kind of the arc of JJ is that he makes mistakes. And I really want to make mistake. I really want JJ to make mistake and then, um, then come back and fix it. That's what I want. Um, Mia, Mia, if you're here, she asked, what did you take home from set? Did you steal anything from set? Oh yeah. I stole clothes. I stole a lighter. I stole uh all my props no i really did but uh they allowed me to take most of it um i took uh my bracelets the uh season two jj lighter um which is on there and then what else did I oh and then i took some some of the rigs and then a tank top uh we're down to our last few questions we have one here from arizona um arizona thank you for being here she asks, what's the most ridiculous fact that you know? Gosh, dang it, guys. Uh, ridiculous fact. Uh, praying mantises chop off their, uh, I think the males are males' heads when they have intercourse with them. I think that's a weird one. That's a really weird fact. I did not know that. That, that yeah. is a, uh, that's definitely a, <laughs> that's a ridiculous fact. Is it, is, it a, is it a real fact? Is that a Snapple fact? I'm or pretty damn fact? sure. I'm look, should I look it up? I'm pretty damn sure that's a true fact. That's, that's why I said, I, maybe it's not necessarily when that they have intercourse with each other, but I'm not quite sure. I know that's a weird thing to say, but, um, sure. <laughs> um, Emily, Emily, if you're here, Emily asked, what's one characteristic of JJ that you wish you had in real life? I sometimes wish I had his confidence. I would say that. I would say uh, JJ definitely has more confidence at times uh, about, um, his, mostly about his family issues and stuff. And our last question is from Grace. Grace, this is a great question. What is one piece of advice that someone has given you that you still live by today? Uh, um, if I think it's actually like, I've always liked that quote from, I think it's uh, unbroken. I think it's called, uh, if you can take it, you can make it. Uh, and like, if you can enjoy taking it and like, if you can relax in the work of things, uh, I think several mentors have kind of told me the similar thing, but like if you can enjoy doing the work or if you enjoy the struggle of things, you're going to be fine. Um, as long as you're enjoying that part, then honestly, sometimes it can ruin the dessert things, but, uh, that's life is mostly a struggle. So, <laughs> but it's a good struggle. It's a great struggle. Uh, so, I don't know. I think that's how I would answer that question. Well, Rudy, thank you so much. Thank you for being a part of this. Um, if you want to say any final words to everyone here, I mean, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, everyone. Thank you so much. And I, I mean, 
I feel like I want to ask you guys all these same questions. Like I really do. And I, <laughs> I mean, fun facts and stuff like that and confidence questions. Yeah. And some people are in a car here. Hey, pay attention to the road here. Don't fall it. Don't drive. You know, just making sure that everyone's in a safe space. But, uh, Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. You guys are an amazing fan group. And like, I, thank you for being here and being, I don't know, just listening to me. And, um, uh, thank you so much. Uh, really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for, for being a part of this. Um, we are so appreciative and Rudy, we're so appreciative of you. Um, I, I can't wait to catch up with you in person soon. Oh, thanks, Justin. I hope to, uh, I hope to see you soon and, uh, we'll shoot again. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. Thank you so much. See ya.